Hello again, we are now going to look at another pulley system. In this case, we have an inclined plane of angle of inclination theta with the ramp being a rough surface, an ideal pulley, and one string that connects objects M1 and M2. M1 is in contact with the ramp. M2 does not touch any surface. This is an ideal pulley, like all the pulleys in our problems. As a reminder, ideal pulleys are massless and frictionless. The given information in this problem is that the whole system is accelerating counterclockwise. So let's go ahead and do the free body diagram for this object. Objects. Uh, we are going to start with object M2, and uh, we are going to draw a force of gravity here, M2G. I'm going to draw it quite long uh, because, again, we have counterclockwise acceleration, so that tells me that this should be quite a long force here. There we go. Label it M2G. And then there is a force of tension that's going to pull this object along the string, along the string upwards. So there we go, the force of tension from the center of gravity upwards, and let's call that T. And those are the only two forces acting upon M2. M1. For M1, we are going to have M1G vertically downwards. We are going to have a normal force perpendicular to the plane, which is going to have to be, again, going perpendicular to the plane, starting from the center of gravity, something like this. Let's label that M. We are going to have a tension force pulling on this object, which must be the same as this tension force, because there is only one string. So let me draw that now here. The same tension, T here, and uh, one more force, because this is a rough surface, there will be a force of friction in the opposite direction of motion. Knowing that this is a counterclockwise accelerated motion, the force of friction on M1 will have to be down the ramp. So let me draw that one over here, like a small little green vector for now, FK. Uh, so these are the forces acting upon both these objects. In order to do a magnitude check on these forces over here, we are going to have to consider only the direction that's parallel to the surface, and we have T and FK going in that direction. That's going to be our X direction, so let's draw the helping X axis. And then we are going to consider the one perpendicular to the surface, which is going to be our y-axis. And now we realize that out of the four forces acting upon M1, the only one that must be resolved is going to be M1g. And we've done this before when we looked at other inclined plane problems. So let's just do the same exact thing. Carefully resolve M1g by drawing perpendiculars to the x and to the y, and then we have one component going in this direction and another component going in this direction. If you remember, this big right triangle of inclination theta is similar to this small right triangle, so therefore this angle theta will have to be equal or congruent to this angle theta, which is also congruent to this angle theta. And that's going to help us with the two components of M1G, which is now, when we look at this angle theta, is going to, uh, that fact is going to help us realize that this component is the opposite of theta, so it will be M1G sine theta, and this component here is the adjacent to theta, so it must be M1G cosine theta. Now we are ready to do the magnitude check for both objects. Let's go ahead and start with M2. There are two forces acting on M2. This object accelerates downwards, so they must be unbalanced 
in the favor of the one going downwards and that's M2G while M2G is 18 centimeters T over here is only 10 18 greater than 10 so we are good with the unbalanced forces on M2 now for M1 that's a little bit different because we have forces going in the Y direction N1 upwards and M1G cosine theta downwards and we have forces going in the X direction T up the ramp fk and m1g sine theta down the ramp so let's start with the forces on the y which are n and m1g cosine theta they must be balanced because the object accelerates up the ramp which means m1g cosine theta is seven centimeters n is nine which tells me that n is too long i'm gonna shorten it by two centimeters so i'm gonna have only seven centimeters now which is up to there uh, and that means now seven centimeters for n seven centimeters for m1g cosine theta gives me a balance of forces along the y along the x we have three forces t fk and m1g sine theta this object will have to accelerate up the ramp so therefore these forces must be unbalanced in the favor of t now t let's make sure that has the same exact magnitude as this t first otherwise it's uh, it's a problem so 11 centimeters here and here well we only have 10 and a half so what i'm going to do i'm gonna make this just a little bit longer to make sure that the t from here matches the t from here because it's the same tension there we go 11 centimeters is still uh, shorter than uh, 18 centimeters here so i'm still good here with these ones now i'm coming back to these ones if this is 11 centimeters i need fk and m1g sine theta when i add them up to be less than 11. while fk is 3 centimeters m1g sine theta is 6 centimeters 3 plus 6 is 9 9 is less than 11 so therefore these forces are unbalanced in the favor of t so it's all correct we have performed the magnitude check and it's all correct thank you